Hello and welcome back to the Peak District National Park. It's a very grey, gloomy, damp and cold day here in the peaks. However, I am super excited for today's route as today I'm heading up Kinder Scout and I'm doing arguably one of my favourite routes to do in the whole of the Peak District. So I've just parked the car in the beautiful village of Edale and now I'm heading towards Grindsbrook Clough, which is just in that little valley there, which is one of the most popular routes to get up to the Kinder Plateau. And then once I'm up on the plateau, we're going to take a left over towards Crowden Tower, over to the Woolpacks, over to Kinder Low. And then from there, we're going to head back down to Jacob's Ladder, down to Upper Booth, and then back over to Edale. It's not the longest of routes you can do on Kinder by any means. However, it is one of my favourites, mainly because it's the first route I ever did up Kinder Scout many years ago when I was just a very young lad. I have such fond memories of that day. So whenever I do this route, the nostalgia kicks in and I just have such a great time. The route up Grindsbrook is so much fun. A little bit of scrambling. The river's going to look awesome today because we've had so much rain. And then once you're over to the wall parks, the rocks up there are awesome. I remember being a kid and just being like, what is this? I was absolutely in my element, jumping around them, having loads of fun. And throughout the whole route, you have beautiful views looking over the Vale of Edale. I'm not sure if those views are going to be as spectacular today as it is very gloomy and it looks like there's a bit of mist lingering on the top. But regardless, it's going to be a great day out in the peaks. So I've just made it to the top of Grindsbrook Clough. Such a fun little scramble, especially in the winter when the clough is full of water. My feet are absolutely soaked, but totally worth it. It's actually been a fair little while since I came up Kinder. Uh, I think the last time I did was during that crazy heat wave we had in the summer. And I did a wild camp literally just over there. But when I came up that day, all of the cloughs were completely bone dry. But today, it is a very different story. There is a lot of water up here. Like I said, we've had so much rain this past week. But to be honest, I love it when the cloughs are full of water. It makes it a lot more dramatic, a lot more exciting. And it makes that little scramble a lot more fun. And if you are wanting to do something that is slightly more challenging than, you know, most of the stuff in the Peak District, because most of the hills and the peaks aren't really that hard to get up, not very technical at all. So if you want to be introduced to some sort of scrambling, Grindsbrook Clough is a very good place to start. And now we're on the top. The weather isn't that bad, it's pretty gloomy still. 
There's a little bit of drizzle in the air, but we can still see all the views all the way in the distance over there. I don't know if the GoPro is going to pick that up, but we can see Wind Hill. There's Loose Hill. And that's kind of just the beginning of uh, the Great Ridge, Hollins Cross area. But yeah, if you didn't already know, Kinder Scout is the tallest peak in the Peak District. <sighs> it's argued, is it classed as a mountain, is it not? I'm going to call it a mountain. People will probably say it's just a hill, but the first time I came up here, when I was just a little lad, it definitely felt like a mountain. So I'm going to call it a mountain. But yeah, the Kinder Plateau is pretty massive. Um, you can do the Kinder Skyline walk, which I did at the beginning of the year. And I filmed that on YouTube as well. But in total, I started down in Edel, and in total, that was a 20 mile route. Um, awesome day out. And there were also three trick points on Kinder. Again, I've done a video on that as well. You will be seeing one of them today when we head over to Kinder Love. So I'm going to have my brew and enjoy the view. And I'll probably catch up with you either at Kinderlow or the Woolpacks. Made it to Kinderlow, as you can see behind me, there's the trig point and the views from up here, non-existent. Just after I last caught up with you, the clag rolled in and this is so typical of Kinder Scout. On these grey, drizzly, gloomy days, the clag always ends up rolling in and uh, yeah, you lose all the views. But to be honest, I absolutely love it. I don't know why, it just really gives me that kind of winter feeling. There isn't a single soul up here today. I think I've seen about two people all day. It's really dramatic, really eerie, a bit spooky. Obviously, it's nice to have the views, but I've had them all year. I've been so lucky with the weather whenever I've been out to the lakes and in the peaks this year. So, yeah, winter is finally here. You'll have seen I got to Crowden Tower, and that's when the clag started to roll in. And then you'll have seen the wool packs. Definitely want to do a wild camp there at some point, probably when it dries up a little bit because it's really boggy around there at the minute. And then from there, we've just headed over to Kinderlow, which is one of the three trig points on the Kinder Plateau. We're now heading down towards Jacob's Ladder, where we'll probably drop out of the cloud, hopefully. 
One thing I will say is, although I do sometimes love these conditions, one of the negatives to it is that you can't see further than probably about 20 meters right now, which obviously makes navigating, if you've never been up here, near impossible without a map. So if you are heading up here during the winter, bring a map and I highly recommend using the OS Maps app on your phone. It's absolutely awesome. I work in an outdoor shop and we get heaps of people coming in asking about maps, routes, GPSs. I always show them the OS Maps app. I think I pay about 25 quid a year or something like that. And you can access the OS Maps for the whole of England, Scotland, Wales. And it works just like Google Maps or iMaps. You kind of zoom in where you want to go. You can create routes, download them. So you don't need any internet. It just uses GPS signal. And I've never not had any GPS signal in the Peak District or Lake District all year. And it just pinpoints your exact location, tells you if you've gone off course, if you've created a route already, you can find routes on there. Uh, yeah, it is awesome. But yeah, it's just really good and safe to use. Obviously, you shouldn't just rely on your phone because anything could happen to it. Um, so always bring a map as well and plot your route out or kind of get familiar with the route before you go. So yeah, like I said, we're now heading off the Kinder Plateau onto Jacob's Ladder, which will drop us down towards Upper Booth, which is a tiny little village, hamlet, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then we have one last little climb, which is a bit of a killer to be honest you think you're down back in the valley and then you've got one last little hill before we get back to edale we'll head down jacob's ladder and i'll catch up with you when we're back in edale Just made my way out of Upper Booth, finally got up that last hill, and like I said earlier, it's an absolute killer. Even though this walk isn't mega long, you get off Jacob's Ladder down to the bottom and you think you're done, and then you're greeted with that horrible little thing. It's not even big, but after you've bashed your quads coming down Jacob's Ladder, it's not very fun. But the views from the top can't be complained about. 
and you can still maybe see all of the cloud that's still covering the back end of Kinder over towards Jacob's Ladder. However, over this side towards Grindslow Knoll and I could see Croden Tower, looks like it's cleared again. So yeah, just a normal day of weather on Kinder Scout. But we're now on the last mile of the walk. It's just a nice gradual path dropping down into Edale now. And my watch is saying that I've done around seven and a half miles. I did forget to press start as usual. I think I always forget to press start or forget to press stop. But so we're probably closer to eight. So like I was saying at the beginning of the video, it's roughly around nine miles and um, the walk. It's taken me just over three and a half hours to get to this point. And that's with a lot of faffing around with the camera and stuff and stopping. So yeah, it's not a super long walk. And that's why it's such a good way of seeing Kindy. You can do it in quite a short time and see lots of really cool stuff up there and still get some fantastic views looking over the Vale of Edale. And if you've never done it before and you're heading to the Peak District or you live in the Peaks, highly recommend doing it. The weather can be a bit sketchy this time of year, but if the forecast is looking nice and sunny, get yourselves up here because it is an awesome spot and there's loads of stuff to do in this area uh, if the weather is a bit rubbish once you get here. Like I was saying earlier, you've got Mam Tor up there, Rush Up Edge, You've got Loose Hill and Wind Hill over there. Brown Knoll over my shoulder there. Um, so yeah, there is just so much to do in the area. And then you've got Winnett's Pass over the hill as well in Castleton and the whole of the Hope Valley. Loads to do. And that's why it's such a popular place in the Peaks because there is loads to do. So if you are coming on the weekend, especially a Sunday, I'd get here really because the car parts just get full and it's, yeah, it's just a bit of a nightmare. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. Do, and please do let me know in the comments what you've thought of the video. I've actually filmed this quite a bit differently. I've done a couple of videos on the GoPro now, but I did a few like kind of time lapses and stuff because I, I want to try and show as much of the route as possible for these uh, shorter walks, almost so it's a bit of a guide for you. So let me know in the comments what you thought. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for all of the support on the channel. I've had a lot of love, so many lovely comments. I'm sorry if I've been a bit rubbish at replying to them. Um, I've been super busy with work as well, but I do try and get around and reply to every single person's comment. Thank you for all the lovely comments, all of the subscribes, shares, all of the love. It really does mean a lot. And with all that being said, I'm going to end the video here. I'm going to head back down into Edel where the car's parked just down here. Thank you so much for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.